poison. If I see even a gyro out of place, I'm locking you out of. Okay, I don't know. What you mean by that? Yes, sir. Ew. Gross. That's where the username came from. <laughs> Okay, let me pause here. What are you thinking? What am I thinking? Yeah. Um, if they do come to, well, I didn't buy any util because, um, uh, I don't know. I feel like the classics kind of busted, and I don't feel like I would need to. But uh, I placed a turret there so that if the turret spots someone and they shoot it, then I can peek off of it and then like get some damage off, or hopefully kill someone. Okay. What else? Uh, I know Phoenix is heaven, so we have like a good crossfire coming. So even if they like focus on one of us, then the other person will hopefully get a kill. Okay, what else? Um, I think that's it. Okay, so here you're holding this angle. Mm -hmm. Right about here, now Phoenix is actually watching uh, a main so actually phoenix would make first contact instead of your bot or instead of yourself yeah and then almost immediately we decided to knife out run to the screens what made you want to do that because um usually in like low elo they just like run to one site so if you see like util on one site then um you just rotate unless they like don't go and i guess um Phoenix and my bot didn't see anything, and they KO knifed. I saw on the mini map. Uh, I knew my raise was probably gonna die instantly because, like, usually you try and hold the site even if there's like five people rushing. So, <clears throat> decide to rotate quickly. Okay, so good idea. Yes. So, basically, you rotated as soon as you saw KO knife, and the KO knife actually looks like it came from the close garage already. So, like. From where the the knife landed, it looks like the KO was like from the the little hallway of garage. So almost mm -hmm. already about to be yeah, outside the garage. So now they're on sites. Now they're two sites, three sites. Spike planted. So good timing to rotate. Now we're super useful. But your team is going in. We need to go in as soon as possible as well. We're like our omen is gonna do stuff. And we need to do stuff as well. Probably stick it in the switch and just stick it. One enemy remaining. Don't pick this. Just cover the bomb planner. Damn. Bang bomb. Oh, okay, never mind. He just carried. Yeah. So in this situation here, we're like, mm -hmm. the, the bomb is planted not for garage. So basically, someone can already just immediately stick it and then most likely it'll get defused. And then the your other two teammates just have to cover you or cover the mm -hmm. person defusing the bomb. Yeah. So like the idea, you put the put the, the turret, so the turret will buy some time. This is a little bit risky because now you're basically in a 1v1, where yeah. you have to win the 1v1. Enemy and then right here, okay, yeah. we get another gun, but we don't know where the last guy is. And mm. I would not want to push Garage and give the raise a, a potential 1v1, followed by another 1v1. Instead, I would just let your omen stick the bomb, and then you cover him. Okay. So, fortunately, your omen just like kind of carried this like right quick there, but we can't rely on that all the time. Yeah. Lock that. I think um, yep. when I put the turret down, the reason why I swung to take the one v one on Reyna is because I knew my two. I think it was the omen and the sage swung the viper, so like their backs returned to the Reyna. So I should probably try and like kill her. Before they kill, she kills my team. It yeah, looks like your team is playing on the smoke. Actually, the smoke just vanished, so now it's just yeah. 2v1. Okay. okay, makes sense. So now you want to trade out your Sage because your Sage died. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah, I think it all makes sense. Damn. What do you think of the setup? Is it 
I troll or? I think it's okay. Got this shit locked down. I'm not too focused on like Stress. super optimal setups, just as long as you use the setup in at least a sort of basic way. Where like, yes, you want to be in a position where you can activate Molly's space of contact of something, whether it's you or your bot or a teammate or something like that. You want to be able to activate Molly's through the wall, it's always nice. You want to be able to make con play contact off your bots. So right now you have the bots on site and you're in hiding in a wall waiting for the bots to make contact. So overall, I think the setup is good enough. Whether or not it's like perfect is not really a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only thing is that the enemy team does not necessarily like your setup holds uh, the entry to site really well, but they mm -hmm. could very well like ignore your site and just storm up heaven. So that's the only yeah. thing I'd be kind of concerned about. Where like this entire time you're looking, you're you're getting ready to activate your setups, but you should also pay attention to the minimap so you can see. Where is the enemy team going? Are they actually go going going toward my setup, or are they ignoring my setup and going up the map, for example? Or is my omen taking a gunfight? Is he winning or losing that gunfight? Is he dead, or is he getting pushed, or whatever? Like, what's the situation at ramp, for example? So that I might decide, oh, I can't stay elbow any anymore because I'm going to get collapsed because they have heaven control. Or my omen's falling back, so maybe I'll back off elbow to try to regroup with him. Or maybe our omen... Um, died at uh, he fell back towards CT and then died. Maybe I'll fall back and pick up his gun so I don't have just a ghost, for example. So like, just various possible scenarios that could happen, and then based on what information you get off the minimap and what happens in front of you, then you can de decide what's the best best decision to make. Okay. All right. All right. Someone's A. Yeah, I don't hear anything B. So you see, there's two A. I would get out of that smoke, yep. Yeah, this is the, the risk too because his the KO knife I, it completely disabled everything. It disabled you yeah. so you can't activate your Molly's either. So at this situation, I would probably just back up to screens. Because here you find yourself trying to solo hold sights and your team is nowhere near to help you. Yeah, and then I whiff everything and die. <laughs> yeah, so instead don't think that you have to like like hard commit to site. Always think about like, can I give up site and just play with my team? They look like us, but I play uh, ADC in mid. I heard E a little garage. I want to be hunting back sites here. Do you can you I see why? My position because uh, he KO knives where pillar or like screens is so i thought i can swing off of this contact instead while still having like my util available okay that makes sense but let me ask you who is or well, what is going to make first contact if, if the enemy team goes a who's going to make first contact with the enemy team or what's going to make first contact with the enemy team omen omen yes so while it's good that you're hiding back site and you're planning to play off your bot's contact and you change the position because you expect the KO knife at a certain spot. The problem is that you're playing in a really passive position and what could happen is that the enemy pushes A, takes the 1v1 with the omen, wins the 1v1, and now they have much more map control. Meanwhile, you're still hiding back site. So, so, yeah, go ahead. So would I take a more aggressive approach then? If yes. the omen's playing aggressive? You should cross it with your omen. And then, mm -hmm. if shit happens, like if your omen dies, then you fall back to your setup on site. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, I said okay. Oh, I okay. never thought of like uh, playing aggressive as Killjoy, because I usually only play aggressive <laughs> like duelists. Yeah. Well, it's not like the the reason to play aggressive is because your omen is playing aggressive. Because your omen is already peeking directly into A main, then you should be in a position to trade him out if something happens, to be in a position to force a 2v1 to happen, instead of just hiding back sites, waiting yeah. for your omen to die, waiting for, waiting for your omen to hopefully kill the person if they peek him, or waiting for your omen to die. Like, Try to be a factor in as many things that happen around the map as possible, okay. instead of playing more reactively. Like This is very reactive where like, you can't really do anything, you're not in a position to do anything, so then yeah. now it falls on your omen to basically carry carry the round. 
Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, at this point, now you're solo A, you should not hide backside. I mean, you could if you have like a super hard read, but generally I want to do this because it's very committed. If the whole enemy team, I mean, right now you have super inf like tons of ammunition that all four of them are either mid or will be, that if uh, as soon as I see like the omen rotate off like this, I would get off sights and then I would rotate toward heaven. So, two things one is if they go B. You're in a closer position to rotate to be like you're from heaven. You can mm -hmm. rotate through ropes, which is much faster than if you were hiding on sites and you have to take a long rotation to get to heaven, then go through ropes. The second thing is that you do, generally you don't want to play too committed when you're soloing a site, unless you're like have a hard read that's the, gonna full send it, and you're playing close to a shoddy or something like that. You can take like two, three people down with you. Then yeah, maybe you can consider it. But here, like you're soloing the sites, and we don't know if they push up ramp and take heaven control, and then they do a split from heaven and sites, for example. Well, like it's very easy for you to get overwhelmed, and also you don't have any like escape plan. Like your yeah. only way is to like basically yeah, headshot, you know, kill everyone, right? Compared to you, yeah. imagine if you played elbow, right? Which is kind of similar. You're still playing off your setup. You're still playing off your your bots but now if you get pressured you have an escape plan you can fall you can hide an elbow you can fall back to screens etc but I, okay. i'd say ideally you just play a heaven and then yeah. now you have much more options you can fall back to ct you can rotate to screens you can rotate to ropes you can push up to ramps and like try to take a quick peek or something see if there's anything a main you have a lot more options than if you were hiding on sites or hiding an elbow. Okay. So right now, now we see that there's four people, like two people mid and two people B garage. So the chances of them actually going A, like maybe there's one person looking A, but the chance of that is, is unlikely. So that now if you were in A heaven, now you can like immediately rotate over to Let's say you rotate it to mid to help reinforce mid, because right now mid is more important than A. Mm -hmm. And then what I would do is that I would reposition the alarm bots to to be top of ramp, because right now your bot, your your turret is already watching the main entrance to A. Yeah. And then if you put your your bots on the top of ramp, then you can basically safely rotate through ropes to help mid, and then have your bots watch Wait. top ramp. Yeah, and then you might even consider also moving your turret, so now your turret will be in heaven, and now you have both your all your utility like watching A for you, even though you're not physically at A, which is like mm -hmm. what Killjoy is great at doing, so what yeah. Sentinels are great at doing, that they allow their utility to watch angles and watch sites for them while they do something else or get mm -hmm. value elsewhere. So basically, you have all this all this multitasking going on. Yeah. Okay. The hell is yeah. There's no point in staying A. So now we know where the fifth person is, because let's see what we saw. Oh, actually, never mind. We saw four. We saw Sage. We saw Rain and Raze. We saw Viper. Now the only person we haven't seen is Kale. No Phoenix, no. Not so now they're executing on to B sites. Now K was mid. Now you know where everyone is. Mm -hmm. Spike planted. your sage is spending too much time in mid, and the KO doesn't have to do anything. Just has to bait the sage's attention. So. Hit Reina for 78. Last player standing. Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking it's kind of doomed. Might as well, like, try and kill a couple people and then run away, I think. Okay, makes sense. The only thing is that they don't know where you are. Now they do know where you are because they put the turret. So you give away your 
element of surprise, so to speak. Yeah. Or a turret that just dies instantly. Mm -hmm. So now we know that your CT spawn. And if they're smart, they would just not go CT spawn. This is cringe! And I whiffed everything. Feels bad. Yeah, but the main issue is I just threw away your element of surprise. Here uh -huh. you should probably buy something, buy some utility yeah. or something. And don't play this one and done spot with just the classic. You gotta ping to your team. Ping to your team that there's three or four people sending at A already, and now you got a one and done spot, which is really bad. Thirty-nine rays. Um, it's pretty lucky that you actually even killed someone, but yeah. <laughs> See, what did your your team have? What did we not know? Because your team is full buying. Your team is full buying, and then you're on a classic. Yeah. You can kind of get away with that on attack, but you should definitely not do that on defense because you're basically a liability. Mm-hmm. I don't know, they just bought like rifles with no shields though. So. Then you should buy with them. But that's. Isn't that like troll? Why is it a troll? Because like they have rifles and shields, and you have. Like, why don't you just save for like better equipment next round? Well, your team actually managed to win the round, right? Well, pretty close to winning the round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the team actually won the round. And it would have been a lot easier if you just bought we with good. the team. We good. Mm. Like, maybe you could have killed that sage. And then survived. Like maybe you could have played screens with like a marshal, or you could have played um, on top ramp with like a judge or something, so that you can like get value even though you don't have a full kit. Like say if you're in this position, right? Let's say at the yeah. beginning of the round, and then you just hold this with just a judge, so that mm -hmm. if they come A, and then if they go ramp, they run into your judge. If they don't run into your judge, now that you've secured heaven control and you secured ramp control. For your team, so that even though yeah, they, all five of them they send it to A directly onto site, but your team is like has tons of map control to retake from multiple angles. You can retake from A heaven. The people can push from screens. People can push from ramp, right? They're like maximizing as many angles as possible, and then at the meantime, that your team while they're rotating to to retake A, they can do so as fast as possible because they know that with you, your judge like holding ramp like this then it's like perfectly safe that they can just run with the knife out and get get to a heaven as fast as possible yeah so you can think about these kind of scenarios where even though you're not killing anybody you're still getting a lot of value just by getting map control getting information for your team etc okay might want to start to consider changing the setup a bit because even though the previous time, the yes. previous round, the Kale knifes, knifes here, which would disable like most of your util if you place it at the, what do you call it, at the bottom of the A entrance. Uh -huh. So here, put the util in the exact same spots, it's probably going to get disabled again. Okay. 65 KO. Depending on the rotation, which is fast as possible. Enemy down. No point in walking here, just full, full run. Yeah, your, your team is like already ready to go. Mm -hmm. Like Owen, he has a flash out. The Phoenix, now he's ulting. Tap bomb, or even just stick it maybe. We'll be back site. Go for this one, this. Nice, good job. Nice. Oh, well, good timing. I think, a, I think a bad habit of mine though is yep. um, my crosshair placement's like decent most of the time, but 
I crouch before I shoot so it makes it so I don't hit headshots. Yeah, like against the stage. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm not too focused too much on like your aim or mechanics. I'm more focused on, I guess, for now, is mm -hmm. the timing. So as long as you have the right timing, as long as you're going in with your team, like the first kill you got here was great. Because the flash happens, Phoenix is ulting, and then hopefully, ideally, you're like you're running across this IC. Like yes, you make noise, but you need to get over the site as fast as possible instead of walking. So you get this good kill here on the KO, yeah, KO. Whereas like that wouldn't have happened if you were like too slow or you were too passive. Oh, we haven't heard any A. And we know that most of the time that they, <clears throat> excuse me, they, they usually full send it. So I would probably rotate, I would assume that they're mid now. Okay, now we hear someone's A. You don't have to reload. Just focus on getting out of back sights. You're gonna get tough enough angles, yeah. But here, like, as soon as you whip, like, after this engagement is over, there's no point in staying here anymore. They know where you are. I would rotate to elbow, so you, you might have a chance to get out of here. Yeah, and this is this but... is the issue with playing backside, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, now that you have to deal with someone who could be heaven, now you have to deal with a sage who could be pushing you from the A entrance, and we're still, still hiding backsides. Now I have to deal with, like, now there's three people here, and we're trapped. Yeah, I think I was I was fucked either way, because um, Raze is in our spawn. There's someone heaven, someone main. So it's like, oh well, feels bad. So I would say, try not to put yourself in one and done situations, and Try not to put yourself, or try to leave yourself an escape route, whenever possible. Or like have an escape. Try to have an escape plan. Mm -hmm. So, for example, flying back sites, especially solo anchoring, is very committed. Very committal. I know <clears throat> what must be done. I'm saving. Also, sometimes you should consider lurking as well. Where, like, in the previous round, well, maybe not the previous one's a good example, but if you have a read that they're not going to come in, then you can yeah. get value by. Not necessarily instantly rotating, but maybe you push through A main to get information that the enemy is not A. Then you push from A to mid and you get information that they're not mid. Mm -hmm. You should tell your team that they're A, you should probably get a back sight. This is another one of them position. Automatically I'm thinking like, because you have your ult, it's really like a, a, it's a good idea to like play retake with the ult. But like mm -hmm. even though you lose sights, you can just give up sights. If you get one kill and then rotate out, that's already like a huge win, because you get your, you get your free pick, then you, then you give up sight or something like that. Then your team rotates and you retake with your ult, which yeah. forces like all five of them, like all four or five of the enemy, to get off sight basically. Or there's only like one tiny corner on sight that they can even stand in, where we, your team can like expect them to all be there. Okay. But yeah, that's not gonna happen if you yeah. hard commit to site like this. And then yeah. when you hard commit to site, what could happen is that they push you 
multiple people will swing you. And now you the only way for you to escape this situation is to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. I think um what I thought I thought I was like we half bought, I considered like, using my ult for to hold side or to retake, but I thought like might as well save it for next round when we full buy because we're only half buying now. Like okay. our chances are lower of like winning gunfights. Okay, so let me ask you here. You hear people coming A, and then you hear people getting orb, mm -hmm. and then I think some, some viper wall goes up or something. Well, that was their viper wall. So, when are you thinking to put the alt, like put the Killjoy alt, and where? Oh, I would have just saved it for next round because okay. we're on a half buy. And I feel like they would just rush me and just kill the Killjoy alt. So yeah. Like, I would die and then, yeah. yeah. My ult would be useless. But your ult would be useful if you just weren't playing backside. Like imagine if you played from screens or if you played from heaven. Yeah. And then you get one pick and then you fall back with your team. And then as long as you secure heaven control, then you can ult from heaven, which will cover like most of the site already. Mm hmm Okay. So yeah, this all goes back to like try not to play one and done positions. Try not to play super committed positions. Like, give yourself an escape plan. Mm -hmm. I... <clears throat> I have a question. Yep. If you don't mind. Sure. Um, in that scenario, what, like, I think that, like, saving ult is sometimes nice. But looking back at that round, if you played from screens and just ulted from screens or heaven, you guys probably win that round maybe because the Viper would probably like have to go outside of ult and you guys already had raise. Um, I know I don't think about this like in game, but raise had ult, you got a pick in ropes. So I feel like thinking about like saving ult might not always be the best. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Don't always think that the round's already lost, so therefore let's save ult. The round's always yeah. winnable, especially when it's still 5v5. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, I think the more fundamental issue is that you have to put yourself in a situation to be able to use the ult. The main yeah. issue with that, uh, with th that last round is that you played in a one and done position, so that using your ult was not even an option. Mm. The only option to like actually win this round, your only win condition is that you kill everybody that comes A. Like you want to have these two people. That's like the only way that you get out of this situation. Okay, any more questions so far? No, I just... Okay. Sorry. No, 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 just no, no worries. Any input is good. I think in that scenario, all you have to do is like put on one bot or like your um your turret down and play like screens and get the info for yeah. like retake. I hate chaos. Sentinel's worst nightmare. Yes. So I hear you're rotating, 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 and then what are you thinking? Um, I need to go and help my team. As soon as possible, I was thinking going pillar because, like, we can all watch main and then like just swing off of each other. Okay. So that's why I just run as as fast as I can to get there. Okay. Because they're already watching heaven, right? So like, what's the point in going heaven if they're not on site already? Uh, I should just help them. So help the phoenix and race so they don't get onto site. So why CT spawn? Because. Then I can, if I sit where default is, planting, um, and say they flash in or something, then we can all swing together because we can all, like, you know, they can't shoot all of us at once, right? Unless they're, like, fucking sentinels. So, yeah. And also I can, like, I don't know, heaven, like, what can you watch if they're not on site yet? Well, at least from heaven, I think you have a better angle. Like, you can directly help the phoenix and then... Your your vase will hopefully play contact off your phoenix. 
compared mm. to like what I'm worried about is like you take this rotation, this rotation is slower than if you were at heaven, and then you can immediately watch the cross in case they run across or something like that. But yeah, while you're taking you this rotation, is that engagements could be happening while we're taking this long rotation compared to right now we could be in heaven already and we mm -hmm. could probably help our team at least by shooting the the ko make sure that he dies and there's no chance for them to res yeah i think also like what i was worried about is that the sage walls it so then you break the wall and that's oh. another like valuable thing you, you can do as opposed to okay we're making this the ct rotation <laughs> if the wall yeah. comes up well, we're not even in a position to do anything with the wall. Mm -hmm. we're, we're now like, the only thing that we can do is hope that our race survives is until we're, we get close to the, the, the pillar. Mm -hmm. But I think if we went heaven instead, we can become useful much sooner. Yeah. And then we can still, let's say if nothing happens, then okay, we drop down from, from heaven and then get to pillar or whatever. Okay. But yeah, probably, especially as Kojo, where like your utility, if something utility is really important, I would look to get rid of that KO as fast as possible. Like if you just help spray down the KO from heaven or something, then you can put down your mollies, put down your turret, put down whatever to help your team out. Yeah. Okay, so let's see how this plays out. Careful of peeking this too early, make sure you don't peek if you raise. Great. <laughs> One enemy remaining. Never heard of aim. Okay. I'll pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um probably go and help the omen because they're they wanna collapse onto her, so like he's alone, so if like he does die, then I can like either swing out from Evan area to mid and like trade him or like yeah. Yeah, makes perfect sense. In situations like where your team is up in numbers and you know that the enemy team is not really going to try to win, instead they're just going to look for its exit kills or look for vulnerable ones to get easy picks and then fall back or something like that, then what you want to do is, is try to play a buddy system. Like you said, you want to follow your omen because omen's alone. The rest of your team is like three stacked together and just let them three stack together and they're already together, go for whoever's alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's great, nobody died. I don't like how this is the exact same setup. I'm kind of expecting if they go A, the K is going to disable it because he's disabled it every single round so far. Yeah, I was pretty useless on defense. There your setups and positioning or on defense. Should really tell your team that hey, the so whenever you see utility happen, especially utility like Viper's wall, then mm -hmm. that's a sign. One's a sign that the enemy team is more likely to commit to A, and yeah. it's also a sign to your, to your team that Viper no longer has wall available. Like she can't mm -hmm. reposition her wall. Yeah. So get into habit of coming out any. Like almost any utility that you, that you see, especially okay. um, more important utility like Viper's Wall. But the same goes for like if you see um, the Raise Nade or KO Knife or Rainer Flashes. Like if the if your team knows that Rainer does not have any flashes, like let's say it's it's post plant or whatever, we know that Rainer doesn't have any flashes. Then your team can be more aggressive. They can expect the Rainer to not be able to flash anything. She would have to dry peek everything. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, get into the time I coming. Hate my teammates, so I don't call them. <laughs> or I, I get I, I get pissed at them. Yeah, it is frustrating, but even if you're not, this needs coming for you. Oh man, that's the smoke. Oh, that's a crazy lineup. Why can't I have a V position? Just like as soon as you get the kill. Eliminate. Not just because like it, it's a good rule of thumb to reposition after you get a kill, but because there's no longer a point in watching this because the the wall is already yeah. blocked off the entrance. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that they can actually push you until the wall goes down. So you know, there's one point that you help your omen that if I was the enemy team, since the only place I can go is ramps, I would go ramps and what's gonna happen is you get those people ramps gonna fight the omen or fight the yeah. sage. 
So when that happens, we want to be in position to, again, trade our team out. Force those 1v1s to become 2v1s. Unfortunately, Sage picks too early. Like your Sage should play a contact off your Omen. But here, here I'm just looking at the minimap, right? I see that the Omen and the Sage have a sort of crossfire set up. As long as Omen yeah. makes first contact. But then Sage now, and actually the double peaked. The double peaking against the Reyna. Now the Omen falls back. And now the Sage peaks further. Now it becomes a 1v1. Mm -hmm. Now she peaks even further. Really, is really committed. Loses it. Now what? the Omen can't trade her. Money. Uh, Reyna's full health. And then that's a 3v3 now. Okay, let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, um... I don't think... I think what I should have done is stick with Omen so that he doesn't die. But I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. The best play right now yeah. is to play off your own. Make sure that your team maintains heaven control, maintains ramp control. You have yeah. all your setup on the entrance to A, and you have the Sage wall already. So the chances of them, the enemy team, pushing to A is already pretty low. And if they did, the wall plus your mollies would slow them pretty long for your team to rotate or your team to get better positions. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is that you play A Heaven with your Omen, control A Heaven, and then if they were to push to A, like they break the wall, walk into your mollies, you, then you, you play off your setup, you peek from Heaven, for example, get a kill, whatever, slow them down. Mm -hmm. But the whole time you're, you're serving two purposes. One is you're playing off your Omen and keeping control of A Heaven. And second is that from Heaven, you can still like watch the entrance to A. Yeah. And in a worst case scenario, as long as you maintain A Heaven control, then because you have your Killjoy ult, it becomes very easy to retake. Okay. Would it also be good to communicate to the Rays to watch mid? Yes. To because now you're all three there, and yeah. like you like he said, is you have your mollies and everything with ult, you can mm -hmm. stall and then just play retake once Rays rotates over if they do decide to go to A. Yeah, I agree with that 100. percent Right now your Rays is in a useless position where she's not actively watching anything, she's not mm -hmm. actively contributing anything to the team. Besides just rotating to a different position. Yeah. But even the position she would go to, whether it's screens or heaven, it's kind of redundant because you you and Omen are already controlling this area. Mm hmm So yeah, we at the, if I was enemy team, then I would have probably go mid. Well, I guess if I if I knew the nobody was mid, but right now your your team does not have any information on mid. We have no information about anything that'd be able, but we do know that the the likely to be Outside of A, we're just not sure that they could be rotating out to B or to admit. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is a pointless peak. I mean, this the smoke is basically just a bait because there's no way for them to push. This is the sage wall. This is exactly why you pick this and stuff in here. And now you put yourself in a super committed position again. Mm -hmm. Right here, you should rotate to screens to A heaven so that you don't have to be committed. 80 Reyna healing. Bot coming back. I like the rotation speeds. Oh, man, where did he come from? Oh, he's walking A heaven exactly. I was looking at the mini map. 80 Reyna. Just, yeah. It's yeah. just there. I was like, oh. I mean, I wasn't expecting him to be CT either, but this is this happened because you, you didn't have control of A heaven this entire time. Yeah. When Owen was running away, then Kale was probably walking up in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. Nice try. So minor issues, snowballing to big issues that we're, we're playing too committed on sites, and we're not. I mean, the rotation speed is good, but we're not playing in the right positions. Mm -hmm. I need to be more adaptable with my setups. I mean, another setup that I would think could work is 
you put your bot on a site and then do like an alarm bot up top if you set like screens or something mm -hmm. because you are stacking B so heavy that and with ult you just automatically just play retake and just gather information. Okay, so like a, a killjoy setup for retake with like the ult taking into a factor of like ulting screens? Ulting screens are having, but I would just set up like right now how you have it is they could just walk up to heaven for free because I mean if you if you, you're obviously probably going to peek it, but if they do get a good timing, they can walk up heaven for free or they can wall it or smoke you off and yeah. they have free heaven control. So I would think it would be better to put like an alarm bot up there or a turd up there so you get more information okay yeah I agree with that right. i'm a sentinel main so I i'm just trying to help a little bit as much as i can oh, uh, yes. what, what sentinels do you mean uh i used I to play it. kj but now i play like cypher oh. i like playing viper recalling my but... Go heaven here, yes. Yes, go heaven. Don't just stand around. At this point you should bring a gun out. Because this whole time we don't know that someone could have walked A site, so someone could have walked up map. Whereas if someone was map, we would probably die here. Yeah. Also, be careful about oh, this jump peek here. Oh, no. We're like, this is like super committed. Right now, we're alone. We just want to get information if there's somebody A main. And we don't no, actually want right. to. Yeah. I think someone said that they were rotating off and they heard them in uh, sewers. I think the Sage said that that's why we both rotated. Okay, so yeah, the rotation or, makes sense. The problem is you're, yeah. you're peeking really committed. Like, look at this mm -hmm. peak right now. Where, like, you expose yourself to all of A main. Mm -hmm. Right now, your goal is just to get information and make sure that you don't accidentally take a 1v1. Or worse, yeah. that you don't accidentally take a 1v2. I okay. forgot what it was, but I knew they weren't. I would be faster than them, and I knew that they were rotating. Pretty sure I whiff every shot here. I would back off here. This one is that, well, I guess it depends on the range of the, of the, the alarm bot. So I'm not entirely sure if the alarm bot will actually make close contact compared to your positioning. But mm -hmm. second thing is that definitely you're going to make close contact, or you and your bot, you and your bot are going to make close contact, while your sage is not in position to help you. And your mm -hmm. sage is like really committed to like hiding, basically hell below rafters. So probably what we should do is that we we'll just play from far back, far. On top of ramps or something, or we'll play a heaven and try to make let our sage make first contact. We we'll play off our sage. Mhm. Mm I think what I was relying on was that most of the time when I play this position, I play like omen or something because I smoke it, and then like usually they don't check this, and especially since they're rotating in like low elo, they just like full send it when they when they rotate because it's like oh they're all on a uh they're all on b like quickly rotate before them so i was like relying on that to happen yeah i would say try not to rely on your teammates being bad or oh, not the teammates but try not to rely on the enemies being bad and like yeah. making mistakes try to build up good habits like another issue is that this is like a one and done situation right so like what i'm expecting to happen is that all three of the enemy are going to full send it to a and then sure maybe you kill one person Maybe you kill two, possibly, but then you're all gonna die. Like, for sure, you're yeah. gonna die because you have no escape plan. Mm -hmm. And your only way to, like, stay alive is if you kill all three people. Yeah. So, yeah, you wanna avoid positioning yourself in, like, such a committed way, especially if you don't have to take those risks. Instead, position yourself to ha always have an escape plan where you can fall back, you have cover, etc. You can disengage if you need to. Or it should at least be playing off your teammate, like play off your sage. If you were if you were in this one and done position, then mm -hmm. it would be a lot better if sage was nearby so that 
if you do get to a gunfight, Sage can immediately turn that gunfight into a 2v1. Mm. But right now, your Sage is, is way too far away for that to happen. She's hiding again in hell. Then, like, this position is, is too risky to play. Mm -hmm. okay, so let's see what happens. You hear sewers. You call it out. You hear one. You hear two. See? Exactly. You kill one, and now you can trade. And then your Sage realizes, but it's too late. She's too late to swing and trade, and then she dies as well. Now, what was originally a 5v3, and if you had, you had like your both utility plus an alt, so in worst case scenario, you can always alt for retake if you, for whatever reason you lost sight. But because you play this like one and done, like none of that is possible. The only way for you, for you to actually win this, this situation is to kill her ultly. Yeah, I troll by. Whiffing too. You will not Feels bad. Well, no aim labs. Well, I don't want to focus on like whether you hit the shot or not. It's not important. What's important is that the, the, the setup, uh, position, yeah. the, the decision to play in a one and done spot when you didn't have to. Mm -hmm. That's the main issue. Not not that you didn't kill all three of them. Like you shouldn't expect yourself to kill all three of them. You shouldn't expect yourself to even kill one. You just your goal here is to get information, and then your second goal is to stall. That's really it. Yeah. If you can prevent them, like if you know where they are, and you can prevent them from playing the bomb, then that's doing your job. You don't have to actually kill anybody. Mm -hmm. Would a better setup for like this is like put an alarm bot for the sage and cubby, and then like do like the um turret on top of ramps. Sure. So you get the cross, and then, I mean, I. I don't know what you think about it, but it maybe play like an off angle in the cubby for the cross to help the sage maybe a little bit when she peeks because at least you'll get like a could get a trade off of it maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But I think she pushes up because you get in a gunfight and that just makes her want to get your trade mm -hmm. and then that just results in you both dying. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Let's see, what guns you have even? Yeah, there's definitely like better ways. She has a guardian, I think. Or whatever. Yeah. She just she doesn't have like a shot or anything, but but there's definitely better ways to use your setup. Just that uh, the you main takeaway is just the uh, before the setup is just making sure you position yourself better. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I should have played yeah, time. My bad. Yeah, and the team around got thrown away because of that, actually. Yeah, we lost the. 3v5. Yes, they used to res and they did a 3v3. Oh, it happened. Feels bad. Here, I'm just like off. That, I was kind of the exact same setup, and then let's see what our yeah. team has. Our team has Vandal, not the Vandal, two Spectres, three Spectres. So your team is half bots. You should consider half buying as well. Something I like to do when I'm anchoring A by myself is that I'll mm -hmm. get a marshal and just sit in screens. And then maybe I'll put like a turret or a long bot at the top map or something just to stall them. So that mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm in screens and I'm watching the cross, it does two things. It watches to make sure that they don't get to sight and it watches to see if anyone crosses if they get to ramps. Mm -hmm. And then based on what happens, if I kill someone, then I'll just stay there. If I miss or if someone like crosses and gets to ramp, then I'll rotate off the screens and then go toward a heaven and watch ramp. Yeah, but the point I think the reason why I don't play screens a lot is because Viper has that nerd lineup for the the smoke for screens. So it's like, man, okay. I so, should play screens. So when that happens, then when you get smoked out, you rotate over to a heaven and then you watch ramp, mm -hmm. or you rotate over a heaven. You from a heaven you watch the entrance to site. Okay. And then if you're worried that they might get into sight while you're rotating from screens to heaven, then just activate one of your mollies. Yeah. So that it delays them at least five seconds or whatever. Unless they're raw and they run through it. Yeah, sure. But again, when you're solo anchoring, trying to put yourself in, in committed positions, try to 
have escape routes, escape plans, try to, like, if you can, put yourself in positions that can accomplish multiple things at the same time. So, like, the screen, so you're heaven, watching the cross, accomplishes two things, as opposed to if you were just sitting on site, watching the entrance to A, or if you're just sitting on, on a heaven, only watching ramp. Then mm -hmm. the enemy team has the option to go the other way, and then you won't actually know. Okay. So let's see how this plays out. Yeah, just exactly what I'm expecting. We're like, you're playing back sites. There's another one yeah, position again, and what could happen is that they could go up a ramp and then mm -hmm. ignore you, ignore the setup completely. You know, like again, the only way for you to actually escape the situation, situation is if you headshot everything. Yeah. In the Another one and done situation. With like a rat. very similar setup. I feel like I usually default to ratting if my aim isn't there. Like for that game. If you're gonna rat, you should buy a judge. 51 race. And I feel like when you're ratting in like A, you're playing really like aggressive, so once you hear them very close, you peek. Mm -hmm. where you would probably want to wait a few seconds to to where they don't think you're on site, you know? Yeah. And then you peek if you're really going to rat like that. But yeah, judge would probably be better mm -hmm. in that situation. But I feel like you're... On that last one, you swung out very far. And if you are going to play the, the one-and-done situations, you really want to try to isolate those... 1v1s where you're not getting peaked by or can be peaked by multiple people yeah, yeah i think that was just the tilt move i feel that <laughs> okay so let's see how i play this raise this help to acp Crossfire with the, the ults. Unless they wallbang it, that could be possible. No, they can't wallbang it. Almost two. Nice kill. Spike down. Now there's the garage. Now you just want to play off your Phoenix. Just back off here. They know where you are. Just give those up completely. Another option, too, is that. One thing I would back off completely, but here you decide to stay. Okay, fine. Then, if you do decide to stay, you make sure that you're not committed. <laughs> so you jiggle pick, great. You just want to pay attention, pay attention, and allow your phoenix to shoot in the back. Great. Now we just want to push our phoenix. Whichever makes close contact, push together. Nice. Great. Perfect. Can you tell I've never played CS? My counter strafing is absolute dog shit. I'm not tired. Are you? No, just. Seems good enough. Just practice it. So far, the timing yeah, seems pretty good. So far, the decision making seems correct. I'm gonna and wall it off. We're all just gonna walk down the point. So what you say? And then I tilt, and then it goes downhill. Yeah. So just don't tilt. Yeah, you uh, should emotion. probably buy something. Fight. So far, the most egregious, egregious issue is that you keep putting yourself in one-on-one situations where mm -hmm. your only way to win is if you kill everybody. Someone's okay, let me pause here. What are you thinking? Um... I know the Viper, like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna push mid, because that Viper wall, if you push it, then one, you'll be Vondra, or like, corroded, whatever, and then two, they can probably have a crossfire set up, or like, yeah, like, hiding behind the box, uh, screens, and whatever, shop, so like, okay. there's no way I'm pushing that, so might as well go help my team in pushing B. 
Okay, so let's say that I'm the enemy team, mm -hmm. the Sage or the Vepi or whatever, and we've just walled mid. So would I still really have a crossfire in mid? Wait, did the Sage wall it? You heard the wall, right? Right there. Oh. Now the wall is solidified. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm the Sage, I'm walling mid. I'm walling mid so I don't have to look at mid. Yeah. And so I can wall it and then go go look at B Garage or go help my team or something like that instead of actively sitting in mid. Because until that wall goes down, there's no reason for me to, to look even look at mid. Mm -hmm. So, one thing I like to do on split, especially when the Sage walls mid, is just immediately break a section of the wall, or at least mm -hmm. one section of the wall, to put pressure on the stage or put pressure on the enemy team that they don't have the luxury of just ignoring mid while the stage is, while the wall is up. Instead, now a section of the wall is broken, and at any time somebody could be pushing through the wall, or somebody could be looking mid and walking through the wall. Yeah. So that now the stage or somebody has to stay mid and watch it at all times. So mm -hmm. even if you decide, oh, I'm not going to push to mid because I'm scared of this fight wall, then you should still break the sage wall. Okay. Only in like a very... Really... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And if someone's playing vents and they wall it, like you said, no one has to watch it. So you rushing B, you're basically playing a 4v5 or a 5v4. So mm -hmm. breaking it makes, like you said, the sage or the vents player, if they have vents player, have to stay. And watch it. Yeah. If yeah. not, like you said, somebody can lurk up and get through heaven. Yeah. It also slows down rotations because they have to like be worried about mid all the time. That mm -hmm. they no longer can just like have a knife out, rotate through ropes super fast, and rotate through mid. Instead, they have to like keep the gun out, check angles around mid, in and around mid, and then they can rotate to be or wherever they need to go. Okay. Yeah, so I'd say that the only reason not to break the sage wall is if you were specifically like trying to keep your uh, position hidden. Yeah. For whatever reason, but in this situation, like it doesn't really matter if they know you're mid or not. Your team has already made contact at B. They already have a general idea that some people, some members of your team is garage. Yeah. And then you running after. And market gives up your position that you're rotating to be. Yeah, that too. So true. I would be careful, like walking a little bit more in that position because you know no one's going to be there, and then they don't really know how many are there if one's sitting mid. But yeah. breaking the wall first and then walking, because then they don't have that information at all. Okay. So I guess it would go down to think about gaining, like think about ways to gain or safely gain information and ways to deny enemy information. So for example, breaking the sage ball as soon as possible is an example of denying enemy information. Mm -hmm. okay. Would a good idea be to put your turret put the turret on the wall too? So you gain information. What would it accomplish? If someone's heaven or someone's uh, ropes or vents. I mean, at the start of the round, I would expect someone to be ropes and I would expect someone to be heaven. Like the default TT layout is that you have someone in ropes and someone in heaven. I guess that's true, yeah. Yeah, one thing too is that because you guys didn't pressure mid at all, the sage was able, like the enemy sage, you see that the ice, there's ice here stalling your team, that's because the sage doesn't have to worry about mid at all. She only has to worry about B garage. She's also pushing the team because it's kind of pointless. But here, the wall goes up, that means the entry is happening right now. Mm -hmm. 
and then your team is all on the other side of this molly and this team your team is still entering the site still full sending it yeah. so either you need to like you can still go walk around this molly here on the right side where the phoenix is to avoid it and then get into the fight or you get you get this you pick up this orb next to you and then you get into the fight but by you just like shooting at nothing this is kind of pointless mm -hmm. i guess um since i know there are people there by me shooting would like kind of deter them from swinging and just killing all my team because like you know it's like pre-fire they they swing that or like they jiggle it then i hit them yeah, I guess so. I'm, I'm more worried about like right here. They're not gonna peek you first. They're gonna peek the omen first. Mm -hmm. So whether you spam this or not, the omen's gonna get to a gunfight before you do. True. Would it also be better to call for a rotate because they used a molly both slows wall. They're missing a lot of util, and the wall isn't covering a. Yeah, I'd Even say... Even if you do a 5v5, they have barely any util. Your omen should have a smoke by the time you go. And even though you wasted wall, it's more... In Pestos, I feel like it's a lot about util usage. And they've wasted a lot of it. Yeah. I would consider it if you still have mid control. But because your team just lost your raise, now the only way for you guys to rotate quickly and safely and without letting like letting the enemy know exactly where you're going like for example if you want to do quickly you rotate through mid and then go through sewers or the slower way which is not quickly is to go through t-spawn yeah and ideally you go through mid but because your raise is dead in mid you don't have mid control anymore so that if you did go through mid whoever is in mid would hear you guys stomping that's and then, true yeah, and then true. the new team would just like rotate accordingly the other thing second thing to note is that it's basically solo queue so it's more of a question of like how coordinated you are with your teammates you could call yeah, out like sure. yeah the, the right play could be to rotate out but because your team is like already committed you might accidentally be causing confusion about whether they should commit to this or not like half half the people commits like the bomb starts planning but then the other half is like oh we should hotel let's run away and then the half other half the team runs into garage while the bomb is still planning a be Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes makes a lot of sense. We take a two to three minute break. I just need to take my dog out to pee. Okay. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna get to the fight as fast as possible. Sage might. Really, what do I say? Yeah, Sage is dead. So basically, all these engagements happen without us. Mm -hmm. They're going to scatter from my stuff. Super easy to pick off. I think we should just rotate after that. Where are you gonna go? Yeah, this goes back to that. Your team, you and your team need to be on the same page, cause like, your team has full send in it, regardless of like the the marshal, like your yeah. one smokes screens first, then he smokes heaven, and then you you raise entries, and now your team has control of sight. But with you yeah, on the bomb, yeah, now you're alone, right? For now. I forgot I have bomb. Kill yeah. Drink? Oh. So yeah, this is a bit of a thought, mostly because you and your team were not on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge fail. Spike down A. Yeah, otherwise would have been very winnable if bomb was planted, but now bomb is down. We had that. I think we just. So actually, did you come? Are you gonna rotate it out? So you just did it. I just did it. Yeah, you just did it, yeah. Your team had no idea that you were rotating out, so if you're going to do something like that, tell your team that you're, go, you're rotating either through, through the mic, 
or through the in-game wheel, or yeah. worst case through pings. But ideally, the mic. Tell your team, hey, let's go B, if that's your intention, so that everyone's on the same page. Put it down, we got entry, got entry. No one's going on without us. No one's going without us. Yes, Spike. Nice body block. <laughs> okay, so now bombs. Basically, a guaranteed to get planted right around here. Let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? I'm debating whether I should peek this, like swing it, and like try and kill someone, or go back to same play it safe. Okay. Yeah. I would say that the best option for you is to play safe. Yeah. Because you are sent in a light, not a duelist. Yeah. So the, you get more and more value the longer that the round goes on. Especially if you have your utility spread outs, you have mollies in the bomb, you have a long butt wherever, you have a turret wherever, watching angles, right? The longer that you stay alive, the longer that becomes really difficult for the enemy team to even approach the bomb, never mind even defuse the bomb. Mm -hmm. well, they have to run into your, your turrets, the turret makes first contact, then you or your teammate can swing off of it, or the line makes first contact, or they might push out of screens and then maybe have a molly on screens, or they get they finally comes down to like a volley one, and then they tap the bomb, but the bomb is littered with mollies, so like the, each molly burns off like five seconds, right? Mm -hmm. like those are all much more guaranteed high value plays compared to you pushing to screens and then hoping you get a kill, which would be otherwise be a 50-50. Yeah. Now you back off, nice little heal. Swing, too late. As soon as I hear my woman get in a fight like that, uh, gunfights happen, we swing. But here we, we, we hesitated. Your reaction times are a little bit bad. Pick heaven slightly. On site. In position. You know, last guy seven. Oh, actually, where was he? Raze was on site. Okay, yeah. Sage is on, on site as well. Now we don't have the luxury of rotating through heaven. If we do, we need to keep our, keep our knife out. Because yeah. there's no point in clearing all these angles. We know last person's on site. This is a bit dense. Yeah, and this is... We also have to spend our mollies too. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we had our mollies already Last set. On site. Then we could very easily like play this post-plant situation. Just molly yeah. spread out on the bomb. Mm -hmm. But now we don't have any mollies. And then when it comes time to actually peek, now it's, the bomb's planted behind the, the sign. So I would throw a molly. But now it's too late. Placing swarm grenade. Bomb grenade out. Yeah. Go peek, go peek. Just hide. Just hide. He's gonna die automatically. Nice. I whiffed Hang everything. On. Feels bad. Yeah, but don't focus too much about whether you get the kill or not. That just comes down to mechanics. Mm -hmm. Just focus about, like, is it important? Like, do I actually need to peek this? And the answer is no, you didn't so have to peek that. You didn't have to take that when we won. Did the wall thing. The only thing you have to do is make sure he's not on the bomb. And you can yeah. do that just with your mollies, just if you utility alone. Mm -hmm. So, if you have the mechanics to like win every self one v one, that's great. But you can't rely on that consistently every round, every time. Mm -hmm. So you want to do the, the easier, more guaranteed, more high value, same like same high value play, that's easier and more guaranteed. Yeah. There's Molly separating us. Nice. Okay, good idea to lurk. We should tell your team to play more passive so that you have more time nice. to to get value from this lurk. Mm -hmm. One enemy remaining. Tell your team last guy's heaven. Last heaven. Hopefully you knew that he was heaven. It seems like you didn't because you were looking at ropes. But right here, you hear footsteps at heaven. You know last guy's heaven. 
Yeah, I thought he was ropes low key, but then I know he's heaven now. Nice. Right there, you don't need to spray. He doesn't know where you are. Just take your time, line up the headshot, get the easy kill. Nice. Instead of couch yeah. spraying. Almost the ace, bro. I couch spray when I panic. Or... Yeah, he's... yeah, it's just it's like a really bad habit. But why why panic? Uh, cause if I miss my first shot, then he turns around, and kills me, and then we lose, and then it feels bad. So then, then you can avoid that by just making sure you don't miss the first shot by taking the time to line up the shot. Yeah. So good. This, there'll be more instances later. I whiff yeah. really bad. We rotate oh boy, early. Yeah, they walled. Yeah. Rotate up mid. Rotate up mid. Oh. Every time you break a yeah, wall, especially the wall that's closest to heaven, I'd be really careful that Sage could be on top of the section of like the opposite section of the wall. And then mm -hmm. swing out. Like while we're breaking this, she could swing out. Rock it up mid. Rock it up mid. Yeah. That's why I saw like someone peek out from top there. Like I'm semi worried that there could have been a siege or somebody. Mm -hmm. Uh, Reyna. We're coming. I got him hmm. stuck in there. Let's go. Probably I would have someone go. I'm stuck in there. Ropes. Let's go. Yeah, I was debating that, and then I was like, might as well play it safe, because I think someone could be ropes or vents. Well, you can. You don't have to like full send it the ropes. You can just like walk up ropes. So mm -hmm. let's say for example, like here, because uh, your raise I got him stuck in there. Let's is now go. pushing up ramps, mm -hmm. and then she be she would feel a lot safer if there was somebody like if you, for example, was walking up ropes and then going ropes so that she doesn't have to. Clear ropes, for example, and yeah. then she can only she can focus her attention only on just the uh, CT spawn or the back of heaven or something. Mm -hmm. I or, guess what I was worried about yeah. is what if they just like what if someone's playing ropes and then when I go to take the gunfight, um, someone breaks our stage's wall from heaven to mid and tries to go ropes, then like I'm fucked, you know. So I thought might as well just play it safe. That's true. Like it's guaranteed, yeah. It all depends. Then at that point you could fall back completely, and give it up, or well, I mean, it just depends how fast the wall breaks. Or if they don't know that you're there, maybe you just hide in ropes. And that, mm -hmm. well, not, not, sorry, in ropes, like let's say the um, the top of the, the the mid part of ropes, I guess. So that yeah. if someone does try to make rotation, like the the sage rotates from from um, B heaven to ropes, then you can cut that rotation off. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would I would say like those are the type of one ones that you want to what that you want to take where it's the same 50-50, but if you win it you get way more reward compared to other scenarios where if you take the 50-50, win it, well now you have you have to win another 50-50 to win that to get the yeah. reward. Okay. So we choose to play it safe, just fine. Let's see, who is the other person who died? Oh. Who dies first? Reyna dies first. Let's see. Uh, Reyna? And now we have some information that the enemy team likes to look, especially if you make noise one side of the map. I got him stuck in traveling. You raise just solos. Solos to heaven. It's got two picks. Just going for a third? No, nah, too many. Sage hit 26 heaven, close to... No way she can win every single one. Mm -hmm. she, she might be screens now. Should tell your teammate that there's somebody in... in Race behind a mass. Nine will last you for one. Nice, good job. Oh, did you buy a deal? Sorry? Oh, you picked up the deagle. Yeah, my. Welcome to my world! Full reaction time.
Hopefully you tell your team that you're rotating, not you just rotating by yourself. Nope. Even this one, like, I would have told my team that, hey, let's go B, because I can just ult B. And then mm -hmm. Phoenix can play the rest of it, that's not ulted. Whereas, like, in all this, it's hard to use your ult for A. There's probably a Sage Wall mid, this there is. That gap's not big enough, though. Now they know somebody's mid. You should tell your team to it out. Now you know there's three people A, at least three. Yeah, a lot of this is coming down to communication issues. You're, right. you're not telling your team that what you what type of play that you're making, and they're just everyone's playing their own game. I think I have enough time to rotate. Don't I'm peek this. They know where you're coming from. You want to go through vents. Smart idea to walk, so you deny information. As soon as possible, you want to look to set, set up your retail somewhere. Like you could put, a, for example, you could put a long bot at CT spawn, you could put a turret in heaven, you could put mollies, whatever, so that if your long bot makes contact, you can activate the molly. If your turret makes contact, activate the molly. Or if your turret makes contact, you swing off of it, etc. Right now, like, you're playing as if you have zero utility. Yeah, I feel like, um... I think what was going through my head was I just don't use my util hill, because if I do use my util, then they'll know where I am. Like, if I put my turret down, then they can hear it, and they know where I am, right? Because last time they saw me, I was ramps. So, I could be anywhere, you know what I mean? True, but at this point, when the bomb's planted, I would expect the killjoy to be around B, mm -hmm. either on B site or B heaven. Yeah. So like, if the killjoy was still at A, then she's not a concern at all. Mhm. Mm so I would expect if I was an enemy team, I would expect the worst case scenario, whereas, which means that the killjoy is with the bomb. Yeah. Instead of sitting at A, a heaven or whatever. Okay. So, yeah, one example play that you could do here is that you could set up a sort of crossfire with your arrays on CT spawn, for example. And then, let's say, for example, you set up all your utility in, in uh, B Heaven. Yeah. So that you put your mollies, you put your long rod, and you put the turret there. So that if somebody comes from B Heaven, they get stalled for as long as possible. So that mm -hmm. your, your arrays can crossfire with you on CT spawn as long as possible. And then meanwhile, okay. like she'll sit back sites, and then you can sit on like on top of rafters or something. Yeah. So yeah, and then you crossfire. You take the two v one against the guy. Let's say if they they split up, the enemy team splits up. One goes CT spawn, one goes one goes uh, B heaven. The person mm -hmm. who goes B heaven gets stalled for at least ten seconds dealing with all your util. Meanwhile, the other person who goes CT runs into a crossfire and dies. Yeah, and then. Okay, I I get it. Yeah. So yeah, just think about how we can like use our util for this post plant because because like post plant situation for a sentinel like killjoy is like it's like your dream right like yeah you can do whatever you want and it's probably gonna be pretty high value mm -hmm. one enemy remaining Grush. Enemy right here we should reposition placing swarm grenade swarm grenade <laughs> standing yeah, she pre-aimed heaven because she knew that we were heaven. Don't let her in. Yeah. I should have dropped nice. or something. Did you guys want that? So, yeah, general rule of thumb, as soon as you kill somebody, as soon as your position is, is known, you should reposition. Mm -hmm. I have the spike. You know, uh, Gambit Nats? Um, link? I don't really watch uh, posting that much. Oh. Well, they're these sentinel players that always lurk on attack. So. Yeah, no, I I follow that, you know. Yeah. The thing was, it's actually Nats was he wasn't lurking that much against the sun today. His... He was like, he was playing super patient in his smokes. 
It's because the first map they uh, expected his lurk, so they killed him like three rounds in a row when he lurked. Mm. So that's why he stopped. Bro, fra fracture from Nats was ridiculous. I still have the screenshot. Dude had a 10 KDA in that map. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just like, like it was just, like shock. But eh, let's continue. So let me go back to the beginning of this because I'm not sure if you guys communicated this lurk or was it just automatic. Automatic and I never communicate <laughs> unless I'm playing with my friends. So, right now, this lick is gonna about to get super high value. But what I was kind of concerned about is that your team might accidentally full send it to B prematurely before you can actually get in position. Yeah. So, main thing is that when you're looking, communicate with your team, use your comms. Even if you don't want to use voice, tell your team, like, use, use the will, use the like, say, like, be quiet. Right, mm -hmm. so let them know that you're you go you're getting behind them, or you ping yeah. like be heaven to tell your team that hey, I'm about to go be heaven. When I go be heaven, then you guys can push in, mm -hmm. like the on my mic thing. Like use like the in-game stuff if you don't if you really don't want to use your voice. Yeah. There's no one heaven, which is so surprising. I would just go rafters at this point. You looking in around this area is not important anymore because your team now needs your help ACP to get into sight. Mm -hmm. Like around here, they run into a Viper a killer. Okay, great. There's still someone else in sight though. And possibly even two people because we know that this heaven is clear, so the heaven person probably dropped down to sight as well. So that's yeah. KO. KO is there somewhere. Last yeah, and those are the two people on site. And now I'll look. Finally, he gets a kill, but it's like too late. Yeah. Instead, I'll, I think I'll look. Would have been better if you if you like pushed from heaven here onto mm -hmm. site, and then you probably would have killed the KO and the rays, as opposed to yeah. like letting your team fight them alone without you. Mm -hmm. Like, if you had this idea that you were just going to stick around cut off rotations, then again, you should communicate, tell your team, don't commit to B, just make noise and maybe rotate out, so that's kind of a bit more complicated kind of play where, like, you did this whole, yeah. like, just to have your team, like, <laughs> just so that you can bait your team this entire time. Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah, if this was the play, then commit, t tell your team, rotate out, go A or something, or I'm, like, cutting, I'm cutting off rotations, whatever, I'm in their spawn, whatever. But like, yeah, your team is like still committing to the site and you fought your help. The only thing you've done so far is kind of just bait them. Master Vader. Yep. Now you know the last two people are on site somewhere. Those are the same two people. Like, you killed everyone else that's not on site. Like, you killed people from rotations and then now you have to deal with the site alone. Swarm grenade. Swarm grenade out. At this point, just give it up. You don't have time to plant. Nice try. Nice try. No, I'm not sure if your team has save. money to full buy either. Yeah, you should have saved. The only human. Yeah, your team, your sage has to half buy. Two of your teammates have to half buy. So saving would have been much smarter. Then you could have uh, kept the gun and bought another gun for someone else. So that your team can full buy. Mm hmm. We don't like sharing though. Keep it cool. That's how you survive. Hey, you should tell your team come B and have B. Oh no. This super wild plan. I remember this. This is doomed. I Don't think instead this. here, I would go through heaven. Mm -hmm. So you go from heaven to mid while your phoenix has the idea that he probably wants to push mid to B. Then while he's like paying attention, you can kill people in the back, get True. control of heaven, get control of mid, and then your team has a super fast rotate as opposed to going through garage. I can lost over the wall. And then, yeah, 
now your team Ouch. is not able to go up in mid because you didn't go help them in mid. Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried so much that yes, you whiffed all these shots on Vays, but <laughs> the this is like a very uh, what do you call it like a a selfish play that that you try to like, cut off cut off only only cut off rotations as opposed to help your team get to B. Mm -hmm. Right, the fastest way for your team to get to B is to go from mid to B, but because oh, yeah. that. They, they don't have your help to control, uh, like around here, even here, like avoiding the fact that you died. Just look at the minimap, look at your team, your Sage and your Omen. They want to push mid, they want to go mid to B. And then even at the beginning here, your Phoenix has the idea, hey, I want to go mid to B too, but hey, there's a wall in front of me. That's why his vision is blocked. If you look at the minimap, yeah. his vision cone. So his vision is blocked, and then now the, the Omen and the Sage are... Now they're thinking, well, I want to go mid to B, but I can't. And then what happens? Loses the bomb because they try to jump it. And now, like, the team has to take this super long rotation. And then even though, like, Phoenix is now on B, now the enemy team has time to rotate because they know that B is coming. So he has to fight the Sage. So all of this could have been avoided if instead of you going CT spawn, you go through... Instead you go through... Take the rope go, up to heaven. Go to heaven. To go to heaven to, and help your yeah. team. So you open up the site much faster. You allow your team to rotate much faster. Mm -hmm. Enemy spotted B. I'm panicking a little bit too much. Yeah, it's uh, FF. Yeah, well, that's all. Yeah. Which you see, just peeking an opera. Go for a deagle. Spike down, B. Now you don't want this. Now we get bombed, you run away. Okay, decide to commit anyways. Huge kill. We all died there. At this point, I would just get out. There's, even though you ulted, well, actually, what the hell I got two. I would not really expect the ult to even get anybody. It might actually just be bait. You have TP. And then but, this like, was. Oh my god. So, like, even though you're ulting, your team is not in a position to push with the ults because you're still worried yeah. about an opera back site. And your team is also down. Now it's 3v4. Mm -hmm. And you know that there's at least. Two people on sites, even if you ult them, then they're just gonna get further back. Like they're gonna play backside or they're gonna play CT. And unless you have a, a plan to deal with the opera, then you know and, and unless you have a in position to even push the site, then there's no point in ulting. If you do ult, there's no point in even staying here. Yeah. So probably what I would do is that I would collapse on this arena, punish this flanker. And then mm -hmm. rotate to mid or rotate to T spawn all the way to A. Yeah, I saw two players detained and I got greedy. I have spike. But then I was like, fuck, they're probably undetained. Yeah, the, um, yeah, exactly. Because you're not, you and your team are not in position to push off the alt. Mm -hmm. And now, the longer that you're sitting around waiting, or the longer you're, you're just waiting in garage for something to happen, playing reactively then the more time the enemy team has to rotate and collapse on you. Right now we're expecting that at the start there was two people on site, now we're expecting all three people. Whether it's two people on site and then one person's mid, or maybe someone's like, maybe someone is soloing site, like the opera is soloing site, while two people are either heaven or pushing mid. For example, like boxing you guys in because they know that you're in garage, they know that both of you guys are in garage. If I were the enemy team, I would box you guys in in garage so that you have no escape. Yeah. Yeah. Drop the spike. I got the spike. I don't know why he gave me spike in it. <laughs> like, he wants, can see him giving me the spike. So he wants, he wants you to go. Because you're in a, like you're in this weird spot where like you and you tell him to go, like like you're trying to bait him, continue baiting your team. Yeah. No, I'm, I I wanted him to go TP to A and then I try and get a pick here because I know someone's close to me. In that case, you should be more explicit. 
yeah to me when you say like, go is like oh i should be peeking the opera for you so that you can like get out of this one in another one and done spot mm -hmm. if you want him to go a then ping a on the map or or type it on a, like go a as opposed yeah. to just go 30 seconds left last player standing why are you pretty much trapped now there's one t spawn there's one heaven and i'm expecting that there's still one person backside for an op yeah Big Satch. So we're doing another alert play. I would kind of expect this at this point if I have an enemy team, because you've done this at least three times already. Race hit 18, mm -hmm. she's pushing up. <laughs> well, maybe not. Guess the arena has no brain. Yep. I know the Reina is gonna like lurk every single time, so that's why I just stood there. Yeah. And I was like, free kill. Come on, let's go! Both their sewers. You gotta help your Phoenix, help your Phoenix, help your Phoenix. Trade him. Nice, good job. What the fuck? Down, B. Go now, get the CT. A little bit risky there. It's timing here. This trade is really good. What the fuck? Putting the, the util there is good. Dropping down with the knife out, switching to the gun, and then peeking CT by yourself is really risky. Yeah. You win the fight, but you really shouldn't have. Balls to the walls. Like, W key only. <clears throat> Molly's in the bottom. Sped out the Molly's, don't put it in one spot. True. So that you don't just shoot one Molly, it breaks both. You want to play off your Phoenix. Looks like he is in, he's, yeah, he's flashing, he's peeking, you're going to peek with him. You want to peek with him, peek with him. You can't play a post plant until Phoenix, unless, unless Phoenix is dead. Or unless you hard bait your Phoenix, then you tell, you tell your Phoenix to play passive then. If you if this is your plan where you, you hard commit to your Molly's, tell your Phoenix, like, play passive. I'm playing for my Molly's, I'm not able to help you. Maybe now he takes a gunfight. He could have lost that gunfight, and now you're yeah, stuck in a one v one. So this all goes back to communication. We're like, here, you're right around here. You've decided to give up playing off your phoenix, like waiting for your phoenix to make contact in heaven, and you swing on the garage. Here, you give up option, uh, given that option up completely. So you should tell your phoenix, hey, play passive. I'm playing for my mollies. I'm not able to help you. Or phoenix, you're alone. Like all those kind of things to say, or like even like a danger or something. Yeah. To let your Phoenix know. So that if I were the Phoenix in this situation, I would know, okay, my my killjoy is not with you. Then I should let her play play off the Mollies first before I peek if if the mm -hmm. KO goes to defuse. Therefore I should not play if I was not play where Phoenix is right now, I would play hide in like CT spawn for example. And just yeah. wait for a bomb tap. Yeah, but because you're you're not really communicating all these things, that the Phoenix is, is forced to win this one one, and you give yeah, you give the enemy team an opportunity to clutch. Can someone get this? I need this. Do you think we win this or no? I think it's winnable. As long as you guys play correctly, like play as a team, you should also sell your util so that your sage can buy. I am so at least somebody can buy. You, have, you guys only have two guns right now, uh -huh. and then you could you could drop a gun if you just sell like two mollies, and then Phoenix can drop a gun. Thank you. So you go for another lurk play. Like the only thing about these lurks is that what could potentially happen? You have to like um, balance your your the value you get from looking versus the potential value you can get from playing with your team, right? Mm -hmm. So with looking, you're across the map. You're only gonna get value if you gain information, or if you kill someone, or if you cut off rotations, etc., etc. If you go on a huge lurk and nothing happens for thirty to sixty seconds, then 
it was kind of like a, yeah, it was the time, right? Your team was fighting four v five for like a whole minute before you did something useful. Mm -hmm. So you have to like weigh these trade offs versus compared to if you were to go with your team, then you can immediately help them by being another body during the entry or being another body to watch the flank or, or etc. Right? You can yeah. like push with your team, you can trade people out, you can watch angles that they're not able to watch, you're able to watch flank, etc. to alleviate pressure from your team. Those are all more guaranteed than this flank, but they're all, it's also um, low reward, I guess. So it's like, yeah. if you save your team, it's low risk, low to medium reward. Well, if you go on a, a huge look, it's high risk, high reward. Mm-hmm. So just keep that in mind when you decide to go on a lurk versus not lurk. Yeah. You also don't want to look too slow. So already, like, just by looking at the map, your team has already entered sight. Your team has most of heavy control. Right? So, like, two people are on sight. Bond's about to get planted. Sage has full view of heaven. And so far, I haven't seen anybody, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. So right now, you lurking... Outside of garage, it's like completely it's useless. Yeah. Right now, actually, I would just full send it to T spawn regroup with my team, so that at the very least, I can cut off a rotation that comes from sewers. Maybe put like a long bar or turret, whatever, and then I will put a turret to help watch screens or whatever. So like I can like watch multiple angles from ramp or from a main as possible. Mm -hmm. I think I actually die here. <laughs> Uh, never mind. She's right there. I probably wouldn't do this. Now, if any team was smart, they would know that somebody's looking at. Also, I think Sage just walled you in. Yeah. Two A. I mean, two. you break the wall. You break the wall. You pay attention. Two A. Right here, you I see mean, that they're both heaven. Yeah. And then your only option right now is to break the wall. You, you don't really have time to like rotate anywhere else. If by the time you do that, then they could have already pushed site, they could have already pushed your sage, like fights could have been already decided. But the guaranteed way to get value right now, break the wall, bait Gosh. attention, yeah, bait attention so that they're focused on you instead of focus on your team, instead of focus on defusing the bomb. Mm -hmm. So don't think that, oh, I break this wall, now I have to fight a bomb me too. No, you don't. You just have to bait the attention on me too. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen, if you just continue sitting at this wall, you continue getting zero value, and the enemy team has more and more time to fight your team instead of you. Mm -hmm. One enemy remaining. Yeah, I was lucky they you clutched good? that. Lucky that your team clutched, yep. Welcome to my Okay, so when this happens, we want to find out where Viper ulted and go somewhere else. Let's, let's go B. They ulted B, so go A. Also, yeah. generally, like, if you wanted to look, then what I would do is that I would almost always, like, look mid, pressure mid. And then yeah. force the Sage to wall mid, or force the Sage to, like... Stay there? Like, stay there, right? Because that's, like, almost always guaranteed value. Mm-hmm. Just by even if you break the wall and you decide to like be or you break the wall and you decide to regroup your team, just by breaking the wall you already got value because you're forcing the sage to stay mid as opposed to rotate to A or rotate to B. Yeah. Welcome to my world. So yeah, even though you're not you're not getting a kill in mid, you're still getting value. Let's let's go B. They all so go A. Let me look. What the fuck are you doing? Okay. Cover going out. At this point, there's no point looking because you know that Viper is ult is B and the Sage automatically walls mid every round. Mm -hmm. So, unless you break the wall and then go back to A, or you make this hard jump, or you get flanked by Viper. <laughs> I wasn't expecting <laughs> that either. But yeah, I think you've just been you've been lurking way too many rounds and not really helping your team. Like, imagine this in this kind of situation where, like, uh, your team is like entrying, they have to worry about heaven, they have to worry about screens, right? Mm -hmm. And then even after after you, the team like plants the bomb, think about all these areas that are like open right now that the enemy team could be in, right? There could be screens, there could be ramps, there could be a main, 
it could be a heaven. There's a lot of angles that your team has to worry about and limited number of players, right? Mm -hmm. But Killjoy excels at controlling as much area as possible. Mm -hmm. Where she could have a turret that watches screens, she could have an alarm bar that watches ramps, she could have an alarm bar that watches sewers, she could have mollies on A main, so that if the enemy like goes into these areas, then Killjoy will let the team know. Yeah. She's right there. So now you kind of, kind of up to your team to clutch, and unfortunately they do not clutch. Yep. And then we lose. Sad. Okay, so let's look at the notes that we took. And for fourth one is like um. Careful about looking too much. Weigh the um, the risks. This is for ward. Mm -hmm. Of looking versus staying with your team. Okay, so major issues. A lot of issues, especially in defense, you kept putting yourself over and over and over in one and one situations. And for Sometimes, yeah, you clutch it out. Other times, you basically get collapsed on, you become a liability, basically, where you would just be stuck in a 2v1, 3v1, and the only way for you to survive is if you kill everybody. Yeah. And then, as soon as you die, now the, the site is lost, now they can just, the enemy team just like plants and plays post plant. And then it's basically up to your team to like clutch. Yeah. Especially, there's many rounds where you had your ult, you could easily use your ult to play retake but mm. you die too many times by sitting backside sitting some one and done position instead you should try to play like less committed positions like you'll play screens you could play a heaven you can even play ramps to some extent and i went over like the power of playing ramps with like a judge for example mm. and like this goal goes back to try to vary your setups vary your positioning as much as possible too many times you, you basically either play sites or you play like that spot that's like behind the plants like yeah. those are the two main spots that you played almost the entire defense and maybe a couple of times you played elbow yeah but try to like think more outside the box about what else can i play i can play screens i can play heaven i can play ramps and then think about what benefit that you get for your team by playing these positions or holding these positions so for example mm -hmm. Even though you lose control of sites, as long as you maintain heaven control, or as long as you maintain ramp control, then it becomes significantly easier for your team to retake. So, if, let's say for example, you had a judge, and like there was one round where like uh, your team was full buying, but then you just had a classic, so now you're basically a liability, and then you played some one and done position and you died. If, yeah. if instead you bought your team, and if instead, you, let's say, you, you bought a judge and you played close on top of ramp, and you just mm -hmm. held that the whole round until until like uh, until your team like rotates over, right? Mm -hmm. Then um, you give up sites, which is fine, and then you can let's say you use your your mollies or whatever to stall them, so that you buy time, and then your team rotates over, and they're able to rotate quickly because they know that as long as you're alive on top of ramp with a judge, and you can hold that pretty easily with just a judge if they if they only yeah. um, dry peak, then. They can rotate quickly with like yeah with just yeah. the knives out and get get to a heaven as fast as possible, and mm -hmm. they also don't have to clear like any angles at a heaven. They know a heaven is clear, right? Because like mm -hmm. unless you die at ramps, there's no way that they can get to a heaven, unless they push through screens and then go from screens to a heaven. But that's like less likely. Yeah. So think about um, playing for retakes. Don't always think that you have to like commit to sites or commit to holding an angle. Always have an escape plan. This goes to into bullet point number two. Try to have an escape plan whenever possible. So especially if you're solo anchoring, then it becomes very committal to play like back sites because in several situations, let's say if I go back to like um let's see we're playing B, here we're playing A. Screens. So maybe not this round, maybe another round. Yeah, I here. Yeah, I love garage. And also try to think about who's gonna make first contact. Here, this round, you, you you decided to change your setup because you're expecting a camera knife. But 
mm -hmm. the, what's going to make first contact is the omen. So instead yeah. of playing back sight, you should play around your omen. And then, worst case scenario, you fall back to back sight. Mm -hmm. Then this this uh, location happens here. I'll rotate to A. I'll rotate to B, A heaven. So let's say a different round. Let's say another round. Okay, this is the round that you, you die to a one and done. Then we have the exact same setup. Yeah, okay, so here's another uh, example situation where, like, you're playing very committed, backside A, and what could happen is that they push into your setup and then rush you, like, 3v1, or they can go up to ramp, take A heaven control, and then now you have, like, multiple angles that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Compared to if you played in a heaven, or if you put, like, an alarm bot to get information that they might be A heaven, so you can at least relay to your team, say, hey, Omen, there's somebody up top ramp or someone that could be a heaven like be careful or maybe you can ask for help or something something whatever mm -hmm. but here like this is like way too passive of a position where the enemy can like really punish you for it yeah okay so what's the other bullet points okay so you have one and done positions try to have an escape plan uh, third is try to use your comms either your voice or in-game wheel or pings so that mm -hmm. you and your team are on the same page as much as possible. Mm -hmm. There's several times where, like, there was one round where, like, it could have been very winnable, even though, like, yeah, you guys only have pistols, and yes, they have a marshal, but your team still decided to commit to it. Like, your own smoke screens. Actually, let's go yeah, to that round, because I think it was the second round. On... I had the bomb. Like, yeah, you had the bomb, right? I got caught out rotating back, yeah. So it was here. So you decide with the bomb to back out, but your team is committing to sight. So just look at the minimap, you, your omen has spent both smokes, and now your your raise is just like holding W onto sight. So imagine if you were here, this round would be easily winnable just by playing the bomb, playing post plants, which Killjoy is really strong at with her mollies, especially on these light spy rounds or these eco rounds. Mm -hmm. So whenever you, like you try to make like a big decision, like we're gonna rotate out, try to coordinate your team, or whenever you decide to lurk, like being a lurker player is really important to have good comms because you get so much information that the rest of your team cannot. So let's go to a round that you went on a lurk, for example. Okay, we got this round. So even like here, at the beginning of the round, I will tell my team, play slowly, play passively, I'm going to look A, then as you start walking up, you don't see anything, you don't see anything, you hear a footstep, A, heaven, initially, and you hear it stomping away actually. So at this point, I would tell my team that there's one A heaven and he's falling back as opposed to like pushing up into us and now there's one person on A side stomping so I would probably even tell my team hey I have A most likely I have A or mm -hmm. you can like coordinate with something like say tell your team to like make noise mid and then you can like push through ropes and get a flank from ropes to mid and then that again that also opens up like a path for like, a quick rotation for your team to go A or whatever it helps your team take mid control yeah like while you're doing this this long look you tell the team play slow play slow i'm looking behind them wait for me to get to be heaven or wait for me to get to wherever i need to go so i can become useful etc so calm calm your attention with your team coordinate with your team let them know like what you're trying to do and try to relay as much information as possible like things that you see or don't see you could say even while you're pushing through this you could say ct spawn clear and then from here you could say be heaven clear so that your team doesn't have to like worry about heaven at all they just worry about what's on site okay so calm more use game game wheel with pings and also careful about looking too much there's, there's many times like almost all the time you look in, on attack which is like really common and mm -hmm. if i was a new team if they were smarter they would probably start to expect it but it seems like they didn't but you always have to weigh the risks of looking versus staying with your team there's sometimes where like if your team like entries onto site and and then gets the bomb down now like as killjoy you get way more value 
by playing post plant then you are lurking yeah. yeah just by watching angles controlling angles controlling this and that and then making yourself like a really global play, like playing from a main for example you watch three different angles just one person can watch different angles but if i was like phoenix for example i won't if i was playing a main i wouldn't be able to watch one angle at a time Mm-hmm. Yeah, so weigh the risk is the reward. Okay, so these are the main issues. Main issues try to value your setups and position your defense more. It's too many times that on defense you basically play back sites. Or another round, you basically play. Alright. Okay, this is the same round, let's go through different rounds. Well, you basically play here. These are the main two spots you played almost the entirety of defense. And then only like a couple of times you played elbow and then something yeah. else. Place greens so, instead or have it. Yeah, try to value yourselves and position you more. Especially like each time that they executed A, let's say the previous round, maybe? Or when did they execute A? Maybe the extra next round. Okay, so we have the same setup here. Okay, no man, they don't go A. Let's go to another round. Same setup again. Okay, they don't go A. Okay, where's the round that they actually do go A? Yeah, here. Um, I just get yeah, I'm trying to pick a round where like you have the same setup and they go A. Okay, let's see if they can go A. They can do go A. Oh yeah, this one. Um, but there was like two or three rounds in a row where the KO just like knifes your, your setup. Yeah. Which is why I don't. Okay, well, I can't really find it. But the main reason was that uh, there's a couple of rounds where the, the KO knifed your entire setup so that mm -hmm. you. And you keep doing the exact same setup. So you should vary your setup more. Don't think you just have to like put your mollies and everything on, on the A main entrance or the entrance on, onto sites. Like maybe you put some mollies on ramp or maybe you put some mollies on sites so that. If they do go to plants, even though you, let's say you give up site, you play site retake, you can still stall the bomb plant just by having mollies like where the default plant would be, whether that's sign, whether that could be like around closer to elbow, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then yeah, play positions that facilitate retakes. So, for example, if you decide to give up A, or if you decide to play passive at A. Then the most important place to hold to the most important place to ensure that your team can um, push from is is a heaven. Yeah. So as long as you have like a, a heaven control, then then it becomes like almost always winnable that your team can always retake because you have at least three different angles to push from. You have a heaven, you have ramps, and you have screens. Yes. Yeah, positions to control the more important parts of the map. And then third is, think about ways to safely gain information and ways to deny any enemy information. So there's several times that you went mid, and then you saw a sage wall. The easy option is basically break the wall, go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And by breaking the wall, I went over this before, that now yeah, you force the sage to stay mid. You deny, you did it. They, they don't know if somebody's mid or not. Therefore, they have to keep somebody mid to watch it at all times. So even though you're not killing the Sage, you're forcing her to be a useless part of the enemy team because if you break the wall and then don't go mid, let's say you all go, all five of you guys go A. Now she's stuck in mid doing nothing while you guys fight a 5v2, 5v3, 5v4 at A. Yeah. Alright, any questions so far? Um, I think everything's pretty well explained. All right. Well, no questions, yeah. I think overall your, your timing was pretty good, your awareness was pretty good. There's many times that as soon as contact was made at B, for example, while you were defending A, then you, you instantly rotated, which is definitely the right play. So mm -hmm. there's no no gaps there. Your timing is pretty good. So like when your team, there's some team sometimes where uh, you're retaking B sites with your team, and then you're pushing with them. The timing was good. Where like you you weren't having huge gaps. Where like when wins were happening, and then you weren't in position to trade. Generally, you most of the time you were in position, so that was good. The timing was good. So I think most of you just focus on like 
doing things as a team and then doing things for the team as opposed to selfish plays like looking through CT spawn, then you're gonna definitely gonna win way more. Yeah, and hit the aim labs too, so I don't whiff, right? Yeah, and then don't whiff. But <laughs> I'm not too focused on about whether you hit the shot or not. I'm just more focused on are you making the right decision or not. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. If you have any more questions or if you have more VOD reviews you want to do in the future, just let me know. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for uh, reviewing and giving up some of your time. I really appreciate it. Right, no problem. All right, see you later. Bye. Yeah.